Firstly, a big thank you to MSI for making it possible for Tim and myself to attend Computex 2019. Please check out their latest AMD X570 motherboards made for gamers and creators via the link in the video description. Also, a thank you to Corsair for their support. Please check all their exciting products out via the link in the video description. Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're at the MSI booth. Or at least the plan was to film on location at the MSI booth like we did last year. But just look at this mess. It seems words got out that there's a lot of exciting new products on display this year at the MSI booth. Like many, we were keen to check out MSI's new X570 range of motherboards. MSI hit it out of the park with their B450 range, so we were hoping that would continue with the X570 boards. And so far, things do look very promising. But before we dive into the new boards, I did quickly quiz the MSI product manager on the status of their existing B350 and X370 motherboards. And they will be getting BIOS updates to support Zen 2 processors. This is a question that many of you have been asking us over the past few weeks leading up to Computex, so I'm glad we could get an official response on day one. MSI also went on to say that their current B450 and X470 product lines will receive a max branding to the end of the product name to signify support for Zen 2 processors out of the box. So the updated version of the MSI B450 Tomahawk, for example, that will now be labeled as the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. And this does make it a lot easier for retailers and customers to know if they're selling slash buying a board that'll work with a Zen 2 processor out of the box. That said, all of MSI's B450 boards do support BIOS flashback, which means you can update the board's BIOS without the need for a CPU that's supported by the currently installed BIOS. As for the older B350 and X370 motherboards, I'll talk more about CPU support towards the end of the video, but for now, let's check out MSI's new X570 motherboards. I'll start with what's going to be unquestionably one of the most expensive high-end X570 motherboards you're going to find. Following in the footsteps of the MEG X399 creation, we have the Prestige. So they've dropped the MEG acronym, which is kind of nice because I didn't really like the whole MEG thing. Prestige sounds a bit more prestige. I know it just sounds better. So it doesn't really matter anyway because we will be referring to this one 99% of the time as the X570 creation. And well, that's just a much simpler name. And I think a lot of you guys prefer that they just use creation. On board, you get an IR digital VRM using 70 amp power stages. It's a 12 plus 4 plus 1 configuration. So that's an overkill 12 phase VRM with an 840 amp capacity under optimal conditions. Equally impressive is the massive cooling you'll find on this board. There's no plastic IO covers this time around, which I personally much prefer. Rather, the primary aluminium heatsink covers the backside of the IO ports, giving the board a clean look while also being highly functional. The list of features for all of these boards really is almost too long to cover, but the highlights include things such as a dedicated PCIe expander card supporting an additional two NVMe SSDs. There's also 10 gigabit LAN along with Wi-Fi 6, boatloads of USB ports, and I'm not even joking about that one. I think this one has the most connectivity of any X570 motherboard out there. In total, there's 11 USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A ports, a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C port, and then there's two USB ports, which I guess you can use with your peripherals. You'll notice this board also features active cooling over the X570 chipset. Basically, it'll only become active during heavy NVMe storage access, though we will have to verify this with our own testing when we get the board in a month or so. MSI did ensure us that the fans are virtually silent and they are of the highest quality. They noted that while their competitors are using sleeved fans, they're using ball bearing fans rated for at least 50,000 hours of operation. But because they are using the same zero frozen technology that you'll get with their latest graphics cards, the fans won't be active until the chipset reaches a certain temperature. MSI also informed us that all their X570 motherboards will use international rectifier or IR VRM components. And even the most basic boards, such as the MPG X570 Gaming Plus, will still pack a six-phase V-Core VRM with large heat sinks. They also claimed that all X570 boards will feature server-grade PCBs, with the entry-level options such as the Gaming Plus built on a four-layer PCB, while the higher-end models will get six and even eight-layer PCBs. All up, we found six new MSI X570 motherboards on display, and this included the Prestige X570 creation that we've already looked at. Uh, there was also the X570 Godlike, pretty insane overkill board, that one. Uh, there's the X570 Ace, the X570 Gaming Pro Carbon. That one uh, has too many words in it. What do I allow? Is it two? Yeah, two. Two. Two, 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 two words, so... 
They violated that with the gaming pro carbon, but whatever. Uh, X570 Gaming Edge, that one's that one's okay. It snuck in, and the X570 Gaming Plus, that one's also okay. The X570 Godlike is another extreme overkill motherboard that will only be available in limited numbers. So if you want to get what will certainly be one of the maddest X570 motherboards on the market, you'll need to act fast. The real flagship motherboard, or at least what I consider to be their real flagship motherboard, will be the Ace, and this isn't a limited run deal. Again, we don't know the pricing yet, but I expect to pay around $300. Design-wise, it is very similar to the Godlike, and the feature set is still extremely impressive. For example, you do get a 12-phase V-Core VRM, 3 M.2 ports with cooling, 2.5 gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi 6, and then all the standard stuff that we've already talked about. For me though, I feel like the X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi is the real standout. This is meant to be a more affordable motherboard, and yet the design and feature set was really quite incredible. So I'm very keen to see what this board goes on sale for. The Z390 Edge, for example, that's a $190 motherboard. But if the X570 Edge is anywhere near $200, it's going to be a seriously good buy. So be sure to keep an eye on this one. Something else that caught my eye at the MSI booth was this thing. Not the X570 Godlike motherboard, well, that's also very cool, but I mean this case, the Meg Alchemy 700X. This thing looked absolutely awesome, but unfortunately, it's just a prototype, and it sounds like MSI has no intention of putting it into mass production. They claim it's the world's first curved gaming case, which I don't really challenge, apart from the fact that they aren't actually going to sell them. Anyway... From behind, it looks like some kind of strange, really big monitor. It's actually pretty sleek looking though, and it wasn't until I saw the motherboard's I.O. Uh, with all the cables hanging out of it that I realized that it was actually some kind of PC case. Around the front, this is how it looked with the X570 Godlike installed. Pretty awesome case, and I have to say though, it did remind me very much of the Thermaltake Core P series. This, in my opinion, looked much cleaner, though, and this is coming from a big Core P3 fan. Anyway, maybe spam hashtag build the alchemy in the comment section below, and then I'll continue to pressure MSI into making this case a reality. As for graphics cards, we're obviously still a bit off from getting Navi, but I did hear that there will most likely be some custom-designed Navi graphics cards from AIBs, which I suppose didn't really surprise me because we have that for the RX 580, 570 and so on. But still, it is good to hear that it won't be like what happened with Vega and Radeon 7. And then in the absence of any new GPUs, MSI did have a 10-year anniversary edition of their Lightning series, obviously based on the new RTX 2080 Ti. This is a neutral theme graphics card, and you will be able to buy this soon, and apparently it makes use of super high quality, super binned silicon, so it should guarantee super strong overclocks. Anyway, that's what MSI told me. It's a nice looking card, but I'm not sure we'll get the chance to check that on the channel. Oh, and something else that's kind of, un well, it's related to this video, but we heard this information elsewhere, is that it sounds like, and we heard this from a few different sources, that the X570 motherboards, or rather the Zen 2 processors, will work quite happily up to DDR4-4000. Or at least people were suggesting that that memory speed is very easy to achieve with the Zen 2 processors. So again, this is just people talking on the showroom floor. We, don't, we weren't shown any evidence, and of course we haven't been able to test them for ourselves. So take this with a grain of salt. But it sounds like, from what we're hearing, Zen 2 will work at DDR4-4000 very comfortably. And depending on the quality of the motherboard, higher speeds, like up to 4600 around there. I don't know, take that with a grain of salt. It seems pretty incredible based on what we've seen from first and second gen Ryzen. But it certainly sounds like third gen Ryzen uh, will see a massive improvement in memory support and then the frequencies that it can run at. Still, we will be getting into all those X570 boards in due time, so that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm also keen to dig out my B350 and X370 boards to see how they go with the new Ryzen 3000 series processors. And as I said earlier, all the MSI 300 series boards uh, will be receiving a BIOS update to support the Zen 2 processors. So, yeah, that's great news for those of you who picked up a B350 motherboard a few years ago. And, yeah. This is exactly the news I was expecting to hear. I was AMD promised that the AM4 boards would be compatible at least till 2020. So yeah, no huge surprises there, but it 
it's good to get an official response anyway. Quite a few of you have also asked me if your base model B350 motherboard will be able to handle a Zen 2 processor even if it gets BIOS support, which we've just confirmed that it will be getting. And in short, the answer is yes. Uh, the Ryzen 9 3900X, that's only a 105 watt TDP part. So yeah, any boards that support the Ryzen 7 2700X will be able to support the 3900X without an issue. I feel like Tim is doing his absolute best to throw me off my game here. It's not working, Tim. Um, anyway, what, what was I talking about? Yeah, so CPU support. Uh, I suspect those of you with an older entry-level B350 board, uh, you're probably not looking at buying a $500 US CPU anyway, because those boards weren't particularly expensive. I think they were around, what, $100 even a couple of years ago. So something like the Ryzen 5 3600 or perhaps even the Ryzen 7 3700X, they'll be more likely what you're looking at. And both of those are 65 watt parts. So you really have nothing to worry about there. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed our look at MSI's upcoming X570 motherboards. I hope you enjoyed Tim being a goofball in the background there. Can't wait to edit this video and see what he was up to. But yeah, he was making plenty of noise. Anyway, make sure you stay tuned for more Computex coverage from Tim and myself. And always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.